Hey guys, it's Malibu. Welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can see by the title, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I know that my transgender journey update video was one of my most popular videos that I posted recently. I wanted to do a little bit of a follow up to that and talk about some other trans things that I think might interest some of my viewers. I began my transition a long time ago, I'm like 16 years now. Gosh, I'm old. And as you can imagine, a lot has happened to me in those years, good and bad. When you start your journey, you think about how things might be. You expect certain things. You might expect there's gonna be some difficulties along the way, but there's also a lot of unexpected things that come along with it. And I made a little list of things that have happened to me that I was surprised about, that I hadn't necessarily considered would be a thing, or just things that shocked me a little bit. Let's get on with it. I'm gonna start off by talking about the medical process a little bit, because obviously that is a lot to do with it. The number one thing that I would get out there for any young trans person who might be watching is what anybody's starting their journey is if you're in the UK and wanting to go down the medical route and you want to get an NHS referral to get things like your hormones, surgeries, laser hair removal, all stuff like that, that's all possible on the NHS. But one thing that I wasn't expecting was how long the referral process was going to be. So I was waiting on the NHS waiting list for seven years before I made it to the top of the list and I started to get all of those statements. That was definitely unexpected, something that I would really stress. If you're thinking about that, just go to the doctors, get that referral in place because there's going to be a fucking long waiting list anyway. I wish that I had known that when I was young because I waited until I thought I was ready for all of that before I even went to the doctor. Whereas what I really should have done is just gone earlier and then when I was ready I would have been coming up to the referral time. It may not be seven years now because obviously a lot of that was through Covid and it was also a very new kind of thing when I was first referred so I would hope that the waiting lists are going to be shorter than that but I don't know. I would expect that there's still gonna be a very long waiting list. So yeah, that was a bit unexpected and not very nice. So get yourself on those lists. Sticking with that topic, the medication, particularly if you go private, I ended up with a really dodgy private clinic and my medication was not right. They never did my blood. That should be a red flag because they have no way of knowing what your levels are if they're not doing your blood. It was definitely a shock to me after being on hormones for two years to be told that my medication that I've been on is wrong. and basically hasn't been doing what it should have been doing. When you go to a doctor, you just trust that the doctors know what they're doing and are giving you the right medication. Unfortunately, with gender GP, they were very bad. It is a journey because even when you are with a good doctor, they'll start you on a low dose, they'll do your bloods, and if it's not doing what it should be doing, they'll up your dose. So it's a long process because you might end up having to change your medication three or four times before you get to the right medication. That's something to be aware of. It takes a bit of time to get that sorted even with the right doctor. The third thing that I wrote down on this topic is about some of the changes that do happen when you get on the right medication. One of the main things that happens to you when you transition from male to female is your skin will get thinner. I didn't know about this actually until when I first started taking the medication, but females have thinner skin, softer skin, which means that it will bruise easier. The one thing that happened to me, which didn't happen to me before I took hormones was, obviously I dye my hair. I used to have a scalp bleach, which is when you completely bleach all of your hair, not like what I've got now. I've got obviously highlights at the moment. I used to be completely platinum, so I would just bleach all of my hair. And before I started taking hormones, that had never been an issue. After I started taking hormones, every time I would bleach my hair, I would notice scabs all over my head. It's a bit gross, but that is obviously because my skin had gotten thinner and it wasn't taking the bleach as well as it had done before. It wasn't to the point that I like couldn't do it, like I could, but it was just something I'd never had to deal with before. They only last for a couple days and they go, it wasn't horrifically painful. Obviously that's gonna vary for different people. I also was a little bit disappointed that the NHS don't do boob jobs. You do get tick growth from hormones, but you won't get like huge boobs, but you gotta go private for that because it's a cosmetic procedure apparently. Okay, moving on. You might think that you're gonna get some dodgy looks in the street, right? And you will, but like generally, people don't do that. And that was like a little bit of a shock to me growing up because I just thought that was a normal thing. And I guess it is more normal for kids. You don't just walk down the street and people will shout tranny. That isn't gonna happen. However, and you will become very hyper aware of this, people will clock you in the street and you'll notice it all the time. You only notice it when it's 
two or more people obviously if someone just clocks you on their own it's hard to gauge that because it's just a look and they're not going to say anything but it's when there's two people you'll see one of them just sort of go like that's Johnny and then you'll see the other one look up at you and then they'll kind of go back to their friend and be like yeah you'll be hyper aware of that because it happens all the time I think I'm pretty well passing now but I still get that I guess I just still look like a big tranny. On the flip side of all of those looks that you get in the street, something that might be unexpected to some people, probably was unexpected to me at some point in my life. The reality is that 99% of people don't give a fuck. They are too wrapped up in their own lives to give one small tiny fuck about you. They don't. And I would say that's the vast majority of people. The thing is, it's something different. It's the same as if you see someone walking down the street in a really flamboyant outfit. You might see someone in like, I don't know, a rainbow coloured wedding dress walking down the street you're going to look at them because it's different and it's interesting but once they pass they're gone you don't care you're not bothered by it and that is the reality for most people next thing i wrote is anxiety as much as it's true that people don't care and as much as you should embrace yourself you might very well feel anxiety from time to time or if you're me all the fucking time i guess i had thought when i was younger that by doing this by being myself I would be able to be more confident more happy and I think if I had had the money to be able to do all the surgeries that I want to do that may be different but I still can't afford to do all the things that I want to do it does bring a lot of anxiety just to get deep there for a minute if you're somebody who's anxiety prone you should expect that the looks and the judgment that you're gonna get. Sometimes it's just too much to take. Sometimes you will literally just walk through and be like, I don't, I don't care what people think, whatever, like, it's fine. I'm living my best life. I couldn't care less what that person over there thinks. But other days, you might just be very sensitive. And little things can be triggering. It's definitely something that I thought would get better, whereas actually it maybe hasn't. The final, the most juiciest secret and unexpected thing of a trans lifestyle is, of course, the men. I can't even describe how many men are into trans women. It is beyond what you would expect. So to put this in perspective, when I was 16, 17, before I got on any of the dating apps, I don't even know if like the dating apps existed back then. We're talking like 13 years ago. I had practically no sex life. All my friends had like wild and active sex lives at that time. And I was jealous and I thought, oh, I'm such a tranny bitch, nobody's ever gonna want me. I'm always just gonna be single because of the way I am. That's genuinely what I thought. The reality of that, oh my God, let me tell you. The second you get on those apps, the second these men can hide behind a phone screen, honey, there is hundreds and hundreds of them. I used to be on Grindr when I was single. Obviously it's like a gay app, but it's very popular amongst trans women and men that are looking for trans women. Because there's really not like a trans curated app out there. I mean, there are, but they're not popular and so people don't use them. So everyone gravitates to obviously the more popular ones. If you're a trans girl on that app, you will get hundreds of messages from different men every hour like it's insane the amount of messages you'll get on there obviously a lot of them are like ugly you're not going to want to date them but you will have your pick of the men don't you worry about that i was just hugely shocked i was never like that attractive especially when i was younger before i'd had all my surgeries and stuff i was terrible at makeup like I wasn't even attractive and I was drawing in all of these men. It's crazy to me because there's so many men who have girlfriends and partners that they're so quick to just like cheat on their partners with a trans girl. And I know men are just pigs and this is probably the reality for a lot of people, gay people, straight people. But I, I think especially amongst straight people, they don't realise how often this happens, how, how many of their men are cheating behind the backs of trans women. It's so common, trust me, the amount of people that are in relationships that are like, that like hit you up on these apps, it's insane. That's not to say that all men are cheaters, it's not to say that every man is into trans people, but I genuinely think the vast majority of men, at least in my experience, are curious in that way, at least a little bit. It's not shocking to me anymore, but when I was younger, I would have definitely been like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Oh, 
it's, I wish I could put it into words and into perspective how insane this aspect of being trans is. I think the issue is that it's so not acceptable in like men's society, men's worlds, so, like groups of boys. They just don't talk about this. It's not acceptable. Most guys aren't gonna talk to their friends about being interested in trans girls. And so these guys just keep it secret. They don't tell them. And that is the reality of so many of the boys' lives. As a consequence of that, when you're the person they're seeing, a lot of these relationships end up being secret relationships and not very pleasant for the trans girl. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of guys out there that will want to openly date a trans girl. Just look out for those red flags. If they've got a girlfriend, if they're married, just avoid. I always used to think, if you can't tell your friends and family about me, then I haven't got the time for you. I'm not saying you have to like on the first date, but if you are not able to do that, I'm not interested. Do you know what I mean? There's just so many that wouldn't. But anyway, there's probably so many more of these that I could talk about, but that is all I've got on my list. And maybe I'll do a part two of this one day. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you're trans and maybe you've experienced any of these or if there's any others that I haven't talked about. And if you're new here, subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.